you have your notes today, if you could pull them out, I'm going to be looking at today focusing on the goodness of God in the midst of fear. I don't know if anybody has noticed over the last couple of weeks of the, of the, the hysteria and fear in our country over the coronavirus. Anyone notice that? I'll talk to that in just a second. Listen, we know this. In church, we say this. Listen, and I'll, if I say this, God is good, you'll say what? All the time. And all the time? And we say that. Here's the question. Is that a lie? Do we act like it? <laughs> not all the time. Not, not all the time. That's right. We are living in times, and we say, God, you're good. God, I know you're good. But then the coronavirus comes along, or socialism comes along, or turmoil, or life, or we lose a loved one, or sickness and pain. And what happens is something, things start to kind of get underneath our skin, and we begin to be afraid. I read this on, uh, on, on Facebook, and I just want to share it with you guys. This is, it said this, year 2000, y T, Y2K is going to kill us all. 2001, anthrax is going to kill us all. 2002, West Nile virus is going to kill us all. 2003, SARS influenza is going to kill us all. 2005, the bird flu is going to kill us all. 2006, E. coli is going to kill us all. 2008, the bad economy is going to kill us all. 2009, swine flu is going to kill us all. 2010, BP oil is going to kill us all because of the spill. 2012, the Mayan calendar is coming to an end and we're all going to die. 2013, North Korea is going to kill us all. 2014, Ebola virus is going to kill us all. 2015, D Disney measles and ISIS are going to kill us all. 2016, Zika virus is going to kill us all. 2020, coronavirus is going to kill us all. But really, it is fear that's killing us all. And we serve a good God. Everybody say good. good. So is God good yeah, okay, good, good. All right, all right. I wasn't looking for that. That's fine. But is God good? What about when we're in pain? Is God good? When we're in conflict, when we're depressed, when we're stressed out, when we're worried, when we're under attack. So how do we know the goodness of God when we don't feel it? How do we know the goodness of God when we walk down the, 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 uh, the Lysol wipe aisle and they're all gone in the grocery store? And fear starts to knock on our, oh, it's coming. Baloney. Because our God is what? He's good. We have the opportunity. We can focus in our lives as believers on the fears, on the what ifs, on the problems. Or we can choose to focus on the goodness of a real God that his goodness is real and evident throughout scriptures, throughout our lives. We've seen him and can we trust him? Can we trust him? Just so you know, fear is from the devil. And as believers, God has de deposited his spirit in us. Second Timothy verse one. And I want to just encourage you tonight. I want to lift your eyes a little bit from CNN and Fox News. And I want you to lift your eyes to the news that is in the word of God tonight. Amen. Second Timothy says this, for God has not, everybody say has not, has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, say power, of love, say love, and a sound mind. It means your mind isn't going crazy. This is the spirit from our father who redeemed us by his son and set his spirit in our hearts. He has not, say not, given us the spirit of fear. I want us to grow in our confidence in the goodness of God tonight. Now, I'm not saying that things don't happen. I'm not saying we, go through, we don't go through struggles. 
Not saying we don't, hey, we don't use wisdom when, we, when we're dealing with certain things or whatever. But what I'm telling us to do by the, by the spirit of the power of God, I'm asking God tonight that he deposits in us his view of things that are going on in our world and his view of how he sees us. I want, I want you to look at Psalm 105. For the Lord is good. He is good, right? And his love endures forever. So his goodness and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through how many generations? All generations. Exodus 34, you have it on your notes, but it's up on the screen. The Lord, the Lord God, merciful, gracious, long-suffering, and abounding in what? Goodness. Everybody say goodness. He abounds in goodness. Psalm 23, 6. Surely, goodness. I had a friend who said, who's this Shirley gal that, anyway. Sure, I know dumb jokes tonight, but it's first Wednesday, you're gracious. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days. Surely, of course, what this means is, of course, as a follower of Jesus, goodness and mercy are going to follow you. All the days. Everybody put your hand on your heart today. Say, goodness and mercy belong to me. Because God has given them to you. You need to know that. Psalm 34, 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is what? He's good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. I want us to see tonight why focusing on God's goodness is so important in our lives in seasons of turmoil, in seasons of doubt, in seasons of what ifs. We must, as believers, focus our eyes on who God is in our lives. It, because when you, when you don't focus on the goodness of God, we get freaked out and stressed out. And it can bring all kinds of difficulties when we look at everything else except for God. The lack of focusing on God's goodness is a major cause to fear and stress in most of our lives. It really is. There are are negative consequences when we forget that the God that we serve is good all the time. So I want to look at quickly some pitfalls pitfalls to losing sight of God's goodness. Some pitfalls of losing sight of God's goodness. So when we lose sight, when we forget about the God that we serve that is good and it's in it and his word. I could have put up a hundred scriptures about the goodness of God. When we forget that the word of God that we have anchored our life to, that we've set the trajectory of our families to, that is, that is, that we anchor it and it's going to take us into eternity because the truth of the, when we forget that that word also tells us about God and his goodness towards us, it can get us off. And the first pitfall of losing sight of God's goodness is number one, I don't ask God for help. That's a big problem. Because when we forget, when, when you forget, and when I forget how eager God is to help you, to come to your aid that's waiting for you to call out to him. How good he actually is. What happens is we go into self, we, 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 we try to work everything out, uh, out ourselves. Self-reliant mode. You start depending on yourself. You stop asking God for things in prayer. And God, listen, I want you to hear this. God wants to help you. He wants to help you. Over 20 times in the Bible, in the New Testament, it tells us to ask God for help. Ask him for help. Ask me for help. Matthew 7, 7 says this, ask and it will be given to you. Seek, which is another way of asking, and you will find it. Knock, which is another way of getting God's attention, and the door will be open to you. God invites us. To ask him, to seek, and to pray to him. When we lose sight, though, that God is actually good. He's actually there for our family. He's actually there to cover us. He's actually there to strengthen us. He's actually there to to kill the influenza virus. He can do that in Jesus' name. When we forget that, we stop asking him, and we try to work it out ourselves. 
The Bible says that you have not because you ask not. It says it over and over. God invites you to ask him for whatever you need in prayer. I mean, that's what he says. This isn't, this isn't the gospel of Jason. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so when we forget God's goodness, when we fall in the pitfall of forgetting that he's actually for us, he's really not against us. Our prayers become weak. We, we actually pray fear-filled prayers. We don't really ask for anything of significance. We, 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 just, we, we just mouth words. You don't mean it because you know we're supposed to pray. But, but deep inside, where our, our minds are spinning. We're not specific with prayers when we forget that God's actually good. We start doubting. And so even, even when we're praying, what happens is when we forget about God's goodness, then our trust towards God begins to wane. But here, here is one of the solutions for building trust and building faith, building faith. The more you ask God, the more God can meet your needs. And the more he meets your needs, the more you can grow in trust. And the more that you grow in trust, the more that your faith is going to grow. And the more that you pray, the more you're going to see God do things in your life. I believe that with all of my heart. God says, ask, seek, knock. You have not because you ask not. Imagine a church where we asked God for crazy things. Imagine a church that we knew before, before we did something, before we made a decision, before we had a financial need, and, and instead of saying, well, thank God for credit cards, we said, forget that. I don't want a CC, I want a JC. I want to ask Jesus Christ, Lord, can I? Can you help me? Can you meet me here? If we give God the opportunity to answer our prayers, we will begin to walk in faith in a way that we have never seen before. I believe this. And I, I when's the last time that you fully understood this reality that God, I know that you want to meet my needs because your word says that you do. God, you've told me over and over and over that you're going to meet my needs. Now today, I'm actually going to take you for your word. And so God invites us. But when we lose sight of the goodness of God, we don't ask him for help. Another pitfall of losing sight of the goodness of God is number two. When times get tough, I start to doubt God. When, when, when I lose sight that, that, that our God is good, I stop trusting him in difficult times. And see, I really think if we really saw God for who he was, it would be automatic to us. There would be a confidence inside of us. Every time that you, you have a need, you're going to talk to God about it. Just, Lord, oh God, here I am. Lord, this is a major, this is a tough time. I'm going to call out to you. You wouldn't try to solve it yourself. You, you would go to God first. You'd like, God, I need some help. God, I need a job. God, I need you to heal me. God, I need you to move in my life. You, you, just, you just would go to God quickly, instantly, right away. It'd be your first choice. This is what, what we read in Romans about. Because I'm not saying we're not going to go through difficult times. Because I, the, the Bible promises we, we will. But what, what Paul even writes in Romans, and I want you to listen to this out of Romans chapter 5, verse 3, says, we can rejoice too also when we run into problems and trials. Everybody say yay. yay. That's what he says to do, okay? Be biblical. Just say yay when you run into a problem. You can even say it sarcastically. That's okay. Yay. Okay, here we go. Why? For we know that they help us, the trials the problems help us to develop endurance. This is the reality that God is working in our lives. He will take a problem that the enemy sent to crush you and he will use it to make us stronger and better and bigger and more full of faith because that's what God does. Even when things are going wrong, we can have joy. Even when things are, are tough, 
Even when, when the world's freaking out, we can have a peace. Why? Because we know that these troubles are good. They're going to produce patience in us. They're going to produce endurance in us. I know that God's good. I know that he has a good purpose for me and my family. I know he has a good plan. I know he's going to work it out all for good. Not everything, again, that happens in our life is good. There's a lot of bad, but God can take all the bad and bring good out of it, and he will build trust in us, and we will build trust in him. Amen? Number three, one of the third pitfalls of forgetting about God's goodness is I become fearful about the future. I become fearful about the future. When you forget how good our God really is, like when we just forget, fear sets in. We lose hope. Do you know why we lose hope? Think about this. We lose hope because hope is based on the goodness of God. Hope's based on his goodness, not my goodness. Hope's based on God's power, not my power. God's based on God's reality, not the reality that I see. If God isn't good, then there's no hope. And where there's no hope, the only thing that remains is fear. But listen to what David wrote in Psalm 27, 13. I remain confident. Say confident. So this whole whole word, I remain, meaning... Things aren't always going to go good. But I'm remaining confident of this. I will see, I, I love this, this is such a great promise. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Do you know where the land of the living is? Where is it? It's right here. Everybody say right here. So the promise of God is that I will see the goodness of the Lord right here. Right here. Now, I'm not going to see it exactly when I want it. I'm not going to see it like the goodness of God isn't like going through, you know, the Chick-fil-A drive-thru. And you're like, wow, this is really fast. That's not what it's always like. Sometimes we need to wait for the Lord. And while we're waiting, we're going to be strong And we're going to take heart and look, and we're going to keep waiting for the Lord. But I am confident of this. I'm going to see and taste God's goodness in my life right here on this earth. That's the promise. And I think it's so important that we fix our eyes on God's goodness. This whole verse tells us that there's going to be times when you're going to have the opportunity not to be confident. <laughs> you're going to have the opportunity that, that, that you know, I, the, the doubt that goodness of the Lord's going to come. While you're waiting, sometimes, boy, this waiting process sometimes is one of the most difficult because it, your mind goes crazy. But I'm going to be confident even while I wait. I'm going to be strong. I'm going to take heart. And I'm going to keep waiting. Because I'm confident of the goodness of God. And I think for us, it's time that we get our eyes off of the problems. I'm not saying that you don't acknowledge it. I'm not saying you don't say, oh my gosh, this is going on. I'm not saying that we we do do that. But what I'm saying is this, that we need to focus. And in the midst of fear, we need to focus on everything that the goodness of God says that he is through his word. We need to count your blessings. You need to write them down. You need to make a list of all the ways that God's been good in your life. You need to tell fear to get the heck out of your life because you are confident of this, that you're going to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen? Fear for the future diminishes as we focus and anticipate God's goodness in the future. If God isn't good, then there's no point. But the word of God that we have anchored our life to over and over and over and over and over again tell us that he is good. The foundation of having hope, having a hope-filled future, is relying on the goodness of God. Here's here's a verse just to encourage you tonight. We've, We've heard it a lot, but I just want you to read it again. For I know the plans I have for you. Listen. 
The whole premise of this verse is the, 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 uh, the Hebrew people, they, were, they had thought they were being led away into captivity. They were, in, they were being persecuted. They were being enslaved. And they were having the thought, oh God, well, I guess God doesn't have a plan for us. I guess God doesn't care for us. And it's almost as though God interrupts their false thought about him. He says, wait a minute. I know the plans I have for you. You don't know my plans. I know. And let me tell you something. As you're thinking that my goodness isn't there, that I don't care, that I don't see you, that somehow you can't trust me. Let me tell you something, son. I have a great plan for you. Plans to prosper you. Plans not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. So whatever you're thinking that doesn't include prosperity and, and me not taking care of you and, and you not having a hope in the future are a lie and those aren't my plans. That's what God is saying to us. And I want us to, to get there in our spirits as a church. God is good. Amen. And so I just want to look briefly then, okay, so God is good. So God's a good father. Yes, he is. God's, um, all throughout scripture, God is called a shepherd. He's one who guides and shepherds us. And we have this beautiful verse, beautiful chapter, Psalm 23. All of us know it. Maybe you even memorized it as a kid. But it's, it, it's a great one. If you don't, it's a great one to memorize. I just want to give us just some things to walk away with today that we can sink our teeth into this week or the coming weeks. Be about the goodness of God. So how many here can see throughout Scripture that God actually is good, right? So because God is good, let's look at Psalm 23. Because God is good, number one, he will meet all my needs even when I don't know how. Because God is good, when I don't know how he's going to meet my needs, the Bible says he's going to meet my needs. That's why the first verse of Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, and because he's my shepherd, I lack nothing. Because he's my shepherd, I lack nothing. I want you to know that today. So if you have a need, if you have something that you, you don't know how uh, the need's going to be met, if, if, if you have aligned your life with God, if, you've, if there, but you've made some mistakes and you've repented and said, Lord, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. I'm bringing my life in alignment with you. And because I'm coming into alignment as you as my shepherd, because you're my shepherd, I'm going to trust that you're going to meet my needs even if I don't know how. And number two, because God is good, number two, he makes me rest when I'm stressed. He makes me rest when I'm freaked out. He makes me rest when I have anxiety and fear. He makes me rest. That's why the second verse of this incredible passage says, He makes me lie down in green pastures. He makes me. How does a shepherd make sheep lie down when they don't want to? He lays on them. He's, he pushes them down. They resist. I don't want to. Okay, I'm going to lay down. That's what he does. And he'll go around and he'll push them down. And he'll make sure the sheep are lying down because they need to rest. They don't know they need to rest. But he makes them rest. And he leads me beside quiet waters. This is about this whole idea. God will give you peace. Because God is good, he can give you peace. He will give you this, this tranquility. He'll give you this sense of everything is going to be all right. He makes me lie down. God is so good. When we're not resting, when we need to rest, he puts some pressure on us, and all of a sudden we, we, we lay down. And then we go, well, this is kind of nice. Why? Because God is good. In other words, he cares for you. He's a shepherd. He's a father. Never forget that your God is your father and he is always good. Because God is good, number three, he replenishes me when I'm weary. I thank God for this. There are times I get weary. I get weary. 
There's a difference between weary and tired. Tired, a day off, a good night's rest, a walk in the park with my wife, just woo, I'm back, I'm alive, let's do it. Weary, you can sleep for hours, you can lay on the couch, you can veg out, you can eat a whole bag of chips, and you're still tired. You're weary. There's a weariness that you don't know why you just can't get through. You just, ah, oh, what it is, you need to recognize you're weary. You, you, you're weary because of pain. You're weary maybe because of change. Or you're weary because you, maybe some things are out of line. And you're weary. Well, because God is good in our weariness, he replenishes me. Psalm 23.3 says this. The next verse says this. He refreshes my soul. He gives water to our weary soul. Instead of us having to just have to keep pushing through and just, and just grinding it out and being in the grind and i got to work harder. No, no, no. The good shepherd, because he is good, we can come to it with our weary soul and he will refresh our soul. The fact is this. A lot of us, probably in this room, we're running on fumes. We don't even know it. Maybe you've been running on fumes for a long time. Maybe you're tired and you think you're just tired. You think you just need a vacation. You think I just need to get away. But the fact is you're just weary. And the answer to your weariness is the Father. The answer to your weariness is being in his presence. The answer to your weariness is saying, I'm going to stop trying, God. I'm going to try to stop performing. I'm going to stop trying to, to work everything out. I'm going to stop having all the, trying to have all the answers. I'm going to stop just, just, I'm exhausted. My mind's spinning. How's this going to work? How are we going to pay this? How are we going to, oh God, I'm just going to stop and say, Lord, will you refresh my soul? Many of us are weary. Weary of bad news. Weary of fear. But because God is good, amen, he will replenish you. He will replenish you. He will lift you up. And our job is to let him do that. Because God is good, number four out of Psalm 23, he'll show me what to do. He'll show me. A lot of times I, I talk to, actually God spoke this to me and I share it with other people. When Cheryl and I were, we were trying to figure out what we we're going to do, what decisions we have to make. I don't know if, if life's like this for you, but for us it seems like when we're, you know, when we're wanting to figure out if the doors in front of us, the one right in front of us is the right door, three others open up at the same time. And you're like, oh shoot. I thought I was just praying about this one. Now I got four doors. Now I got four opportunities. Or we're looking at Something we're, we're going through and we're trying to figure out how, which way do I go, God? Because there's eight different ways. There's eight different things we could do. Eight different decisions I could make. What do I do, God? Here's the great thing. Because God is actually good. He's actually good. He will show me what to do. That's why, verse, that's why the next verse says this. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. In other words, he's got a plan. You're his son. You're his daughter. Your life is all about his namesake. Because he's going to get the glory from your life. So he cares where you're going to go. Because he wants you to access everything that he has for you. He wants to make sure you end up in the right place. And so this is what the Lord told me. I forgot to tell you that. He would always tell me this. I will make sure that you get where you need to get when you need to get there. Yeah, but God, what about, excuse me, son, I will make sure you get where you need to be when you need to be there. Okay, I can trust you in that, God. Why? Because you're good. Because I can trust you. God, I'm waiting for you. I'm listening to your voice. I'm listening to you. God, I, sometimes I'm just, I'm, gonna, I'm walking and I need some clarity, but I know that you're good, that I, I'm not going to miss it. I'm not going to miss your will. I'm not going to miss your opportunity. 
because you're going to make sure that I get where I need to get, when I need to get there, because you're going to lead me along the right path for your name's sake. We can become paralyzed about decisions, what we, can, what we should do. But because God is good, everybody say God is good. Because he is good, we can ask him, and because he is good, he's going to guide me. He's going to guide you. He's going to show you. He's not going to leave you alone. He's not going to leave you an orphan. He actually says this, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He's not going to leave you spinning out of control. He's not going to leave you with no hope. He's not going to leave you suffering from the, from, from the turmoil. He's going to be with you. You may go through difficult times. There may be some suffering, but he is going to make sure that you get where you need to get when you need to get there because he is good. Everybody say amen. And because God's good, number five, we do not have to fear when things look dark and fearful because he is with me. Everybody say, God is with me. Don't let those just be words. Let that be the reality that you anchor your life to. God is with me. Verse 4 out of Psalm 23. Even though I walk through the darkest valley. Some of you are walking a dark valley. You're walking a dark valley. You feel the shade. You feel the, it's, it's dark for you. Because God's good, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. You're not in this valley alone. You're not walking through this alone. He is with you. He's not going to leave you confused. You're going to walk through some fearful times. The scripture tells us, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I know people in this room that you're walking through the dark valley. I know you personally. And I want you to know this. Even though you are walking, you don't need to fear evil, for God is with you. And number six, because God is good, he will show favor on your life. He will show favor on you. God's favor. God wants to put favor on your life. I, I, probably some of you, even when I said that, you're like, well, I don't know. I mean, I don't know about favor. I don't know, Jason. No, I'm telling you, God wants favor on your life. Well, Jason, favor's not fair. You're right. Because it's called favor. If it was fair, it'd be called fair. Favor ain't fair. Because it's favor. I, I want to challenge you. Would you be willing? Would you be willing to let God show off through you and pour his favor on your life? This isn't about your pride. This, I mean, his favor is very humbling. But would you, willing, would you be willing to say, God, if you want to show off through my life, go for it. God wants to do that. He wants to do that. God wants to put favor on your life. I often pray this for my family and for me personally. I've prayed it even before I was married. The Bible says this, says that Jesus grew with favor with God and with man. That's what it says. So because I am in Christ, what that means to me is that every promise that is in Christ, I have available to me. I'm an heir of Christ. So what I pray, probably three or four times a week, Lord, I'm asking you today that you would give me favor with you and favor with man. Let me challenge you. Pray this over yourself every day. God, give me favor with man and favor with you. You can elaborate. Whatever that favor with man would be, pray about it. Elaborate with God. God, I pray that you'd show your favor on me. I pray that you would do ridiculous, extraordinary things with my life. Even me saying that for some of you, oh, Jason, be careful now. No, what, listen, it's God's favor. He can do whatever he wants. It's him. I believe he's waiting for people to say, I want 
your favor on me. Give it to me, God. I'll take it. I'll take it. And I would just challenge you. Begin to lean in to what it means to walk in favor. Begin to lean in to God. If you want this door to open, listen, go for it. I'll do it, God. I'll walk through it. Psalm 23, 5 and 6. You prepare, because God is good, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. In other words, enemies are surrounded, everyone else is freaking out. God says, hey, you, hey, 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 I got a table over here. But Lord, they're eating, they're eating uh, uh, bread, stale bread and drinking some old stale water. He said, that's fine. Don't worry about them. I'm preparing a table for you in the presence of your enemies. Then he says, you anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God wants to show favor on your life. God wants to give you favor because God is good. You need to align every area about your life with the goodness of God. Not with the flaws of yourself, not with your inadequacies, not with what you don't know, not what you don't know if if God can do this through you. How about this? Align yourself to the goodness of God and says, God, God, whatever you want from me, I will walk in it. Whatever valley that I have to walk through, I'm going to trust you in it because you are good. If we will just dwell and focus on the goodness of God in the midst of fear, it's going to change the trajectory of our minds, of our hearts, how we see God. And we will, we will begin to walk in his goodness and see his provision in our lives. I don't know what God's provision looks like for your life. It would be foolish for me to say I know exactly what it is because I don't know. But what I do know is that God is good and he pours out his favor on people's lives. He blesses people. He looks for people who are willing to say, God, if you want to bless me, I will receive it. And I know you are doing it for your name's sake, not my name's sake. I believe God gives favor. This is what my belief He pours it out on people's lives to test them if they're going to use it for his glory or for their glory. I really believe that. I believe God pours out wealth on people's life to see, to test them if they will use it for his glory or their glory. I believe that God is wanting to pour out favor on people's lives and wealth on people's lives so we can use it for his glory. Now, Not all of us, it's going to happen to us. But what that means for us, when God chooses someone that we celebrate, hey, God's favor on their lives, and I'm I'm going to celebrate that. God bless that person. I'm going to celebrate God's blessing their business. Praise God. And then we walk in the favor that God has for us, whatever that may be. Listen, I know people that that, that, that I've traveled with them. They lay their hands on the sick, and the sick, pow, they're healed. I pray for people, they've been healed, but not a whole lot. So I'm like, I don't, I I can keep praying for people. I've I've truly been praying for people and just, you know, just believing God to heal, believing God to move. And, and, and this person over here, they're just like, everybody's getting, get out of my line. Get up, come here, follow me. Get over here in this person's line. They got the favor on them. There's nothing wrong with that. We need to acknowledge in the body of Christ, because God is good, he chooses some of us to do certain things. And we need to come into alignment with God is, what God is doing and God's going to do through our church family. Listen, God is good. Amen? Is he good all the time? Yes, he is. So let's, in this season, let's begin focusing our eyes on his goodness. Let's begin focusing our eyes, because God is good, I'm going to enjoy this journey. I'm not going to fear I'm not going to get freaked out. I'm just going to enjoy the journey. Why? Because God's good. Well, aren't you afraid? No. God's good. Because my Father created the universe. He measures it by the span of His hand. Because my Father spoke and the earth was formed. 
And my father, when I get in his presence, he speaks to me. He's good. And I trust him. Amen.